Hi everyone, uh, before you watch this video, if you haven't checked out my newest short film, K, yet, I would suggest that you watch it before you check out this video. If you don't want to, that's also fine, but uh, I figured this video about the making of it might not make as much sense if you haven't actually seen it, so, yeah. Also, a quick note, I'm by no means an expert or a professional, so if you learn something from this video, great, but don't expect sage advice. I'm just a high schooler making movies in his free time because he feels like it. With all that in mind, let's head into the video. On New Year's Day this year, I resolved to make more things in 2020. Before this film, I hadn't really made a short film since The Pillow Man in March of 2020, which is a criminally long time for a filmmaker to go without making films. Sure, I had made little mini-projects, but nothing that felt like I put the same effort and preparation into it that I was used to. So, I decided to make a short film every month this year. Twelve full short films by the end of the year. It was ambitious, but I was determined. So I set out to write my January short film. If there's anything I've learned about ultra-small-scale filmmaking, it's that you have to be very aware and accepting of your limitations. I knew I could only write a short film with so many actors, I could only write a short film with so many technically difficult elements, so many locations, and so on. I decided to keep my first draft of a script under five pages and my number of actors limited to one or two and maybe three at the max. I talked to my friend Anna, who said she'd be willing to help me and act in one of my films, and I said, great, and so now I had the framework of some logistics. I knew that I'd keep it to one to two characters, preferably played by me and her, one or two locations and under five pages in the script. So, Anna and I sat down and co-wrote our first attempt at a script for the month of January. It starred two characters, me and her, and took place outdoors at night, which I figured would probably be a pretty big obstacle to overcome, but you have to accept some obstacles when you're making these projects. By the time we'd revised and finalized the script, thrown together a shot list, gotten some props together, and filmed a general outline for a filming date, we only had about two weeks left to complete the film. Two weeks would be plenty of time to make a short film if I had constant access to Anna, but obviously I don't. And so, long story short, the scheduling didn't work out and we didn't get a short film made in the month of January. One small mental breakdown later, it finally occurred to me, despite having made numerous short films before, how much effort actually goes into making a short film, as well as how much effort goes into performing in school at the uh, level that I strive to, while also keeping up with extracurriculars. I decided I probably shouldn't guilt myself for not being able to make a short film film every single month, which proved to be a wise decision on my part. So instead, I decided every other month. That'll work. Six short films instead of twelve? That's a whole lot easier. With slightly more realistic goals in mind, I opened up my Little Red Brainstorm notebook and uh, began working on the first rewrite. This one, which would also star me and Anna, followed a deteriorating friendship, and the script, which I liked a lot, involved a little bit more difficulty in terms of execution, but I figured that was fine, we had time. I did all the same things as before, planned out what the filming days would look like, even filmed a couple of shots for this one, but things got complicated and it didn't happen. There's a much more specific and in-depth explanation to that, but I'd have to go into the story, so let's just say scheduling and leave it at that and move on. My next script was funny, lighthearted, and involved a cast of four. That would be an obstacle to us, getting four people to the location, especially considering that the location I needed was a public park. Even still, I honestly could have made this project happen if I had gone through with it, but... I didn't. I don't want to go into detail, conflict arose involving people who were involved with the project, nothing bad, just sort of general awkwardness and I didn't really want to work with that, especially that specific week, things had just kind of gone down anyway. That's, that's a, that is a not very commonly talked about part of making films as a teenager. Sometimes you have to deal with the same regular teenage stuff on top of the filmmaking stuff. No big deal, I'll just write another one. This time, I decided to write something which would theoretically star my friend Michael. I wrote this horror comedy script that I thought would be good, and then once I just sort of read through the script, the concept it wasn't playing out the way I wanted it to. I straight up didn't like it, so I didn't make it. I almost gave up right there, because I was like a week into the month, and I thought maybe I was just gonna get burned out and not do it. I knew I wanted to keep making movies, of course. I mean, nothing has ever driven me to the point of questioning that, but I just really wasn't sure how soon soon I could do it, if I was burned out or not. A week later, I was on the way to see my newly vaccinated grandparents for a very belated Christmas celebration, when I was struck by inspiration in the car on the way there. After some very brief brainstorming, I had it all laid out in my mind, and it was fully written by the next night. I know you think I'm gonna psych you out again, but believe it or not, this script 
actually got produced. The story follows Brad, a teenager who is in a long distance relationship and wants to break up with his girlfriend, Linda, who he communicates with via letters. And he wants to make a clean break, but that proves to be more difficult than expected. I showed the script to some people, I got some positive feedback, which was the last step that I needed to finally decide, okay, I'm going to shoot this thing. I set out to shoot it at my grandparents' house, which had been the location in my mind when I was writing it. But I was leaving Monday morning, and I'd already spent all of Saturday writing. So that left me with only Sunday to shoot this film. So I stayed up late to get all of my costumes together and to organize a shot list for the film. I organized the shots by number and the costumes by letter, so something might read, Shot 2 close-up inside of mailbox outfit A or something like that. My sister, who sort of assistant directed the movie, helped me out with props as well. The voice of Linda belongs to that friend I mentioned, my friend Anna, but the handwriting of Linda belongs to Lily Morgan, and it's on all of the letters that Linda sends as well as on all of the envelopes that Linda sends. Okay, so now that we've talked about the preparation, let's talk about the gear that I ended up using. My camera is a Canon T7i, and I got it in Christmas of 2019, and have used it for just about every video and short film I've shot since. My microphone was supposed to be a Shure MV88, which is this mic that plugs directly into your iPhone. It's great, but this time around I had some technical issues with it, and so most of the audio in the film was actually recorded with a standard built-in iPhone microphone, which I placed closer to the action than the camera for better audio quality. My tripod is a fairly basic one from the brand Magnus. It's considerably more expensive than what I really needed for this film, the main reason being that I never used the fluid head feature that this tripod comes along with in my film. Most of the film actually relied on natural lighting because most of the film takes place outside, but the shots that I did inside were filmed on these, which are some lights from Neewer. They offer brightness and temperature control, and I used them in this shot to create surprisingly realistic fake daylight. That's right, this shot was filmed at night. I did this by placing the light right up next to the window where the sun would be coming in from and just sort of adjusting the controls until I found what looked right. As far as gear goes, that's all I had on me. Nothing really too complicated, nothing really too expensive, but don't worry. If anyone is out there and you can't afford even what I just listed, but you want to make movies anyway, I could have realistically shot this film on an iPhone. And you can shoot things on an iPhone too, or whatever you've got at your disposal. If you want to make movies, go make movies, please. Anyway, on to filming. That day, the game plan was, instead of filming chronologically, to film by location. For example, I started off at the mailbox, filmed all of the shots that take place at that location, then I moved on to these shots by the street lamp, and then these shots on the porch, and so on. However, while the film wasn't shot exactly chronologically, the locations were grouped by the time of day at which they were featured. That way, I could film it all in one day. Like, for example, these two shots, I didn't film them back to back because I could have utilized that time in between them. So I did end up having to do some locations twice just because it was a different time of day than the first time I, I did that location. But anyway, that's all besides the point. Filming this thing was harder than I ever thought, here's why. If you've seen the film, you might be surprised that I didn't write it with the rain in mind, but uh, it was certainly an obstacle that was there that I did not plan on, and it did end up adding sort of character and depth to the movie that wouldn't have been there otherwise, so overall I'm grateful for it, but it did make it considerably harder to film for sure. Not only did I now have to worry about making a good film, I had to worry about not getting my camera wet while I did so. My saving grace here was the fact that my grandparents keep golf carts around to get around the neighborhood. Every single outdoor shot in the film, with the exception of the ones that take place inside of the mailbox, was filmed with a tripod set up on the golf cart, with two legs on the floor of the golf cart and one leg shorter than the others on the seats. My sister, who theoretically assistant directed the film, helped me film two shots and then promptly left because it was too cold. I know, I have a really hard life. I'm accepting donations of any amount. She's abandoning me because she doesn't like film! She's abandoning me! The mailbox is easily the longest time I spent at any location while filming this film. Not only do I appear there in quite a few shots, I appear there in literally every single costume that I wear throughout the film. And in order to change costumes, I would have to drive all the way back on the golf cart to my grandparents' house and all the way back to the mailbox, which doesn't sound like that much, but it's a really bumpy road, so it's really slow getting there, and it's also a pretty long road. It's by far the longest away from the house of any location. Great news, I am 
almost done with these mailbox shots. I'm about to film the last two shots. I'm very excited about it. I got the camera set up over there and uh, we're good to go. After I was done with the mailbox, my day of shooting was far from over, but everything after that tended to be a bit easier. You see, I know myself pretty well, and I know that when I'm working alone on something and everything seems to be getting harder and harder as it progresses, I sort of, uh, lose my spirit and I lose my good morale. So I planned out my game plan for the day so that I would do the hardest things first and it would feel gradually easier and easier as I got more tired to sort of accommodate for my tiredness. And the locations that I was shooting at got progressively closer to the house which means it made it easier for me to go in there for warmth and costume changes and so on. A couple of other obstacles presented themselves while I was making this but they all sort of seemed minuscule in comparison to the cold rain. For example, I was trying to film something indoors and someone started watching TV in the room right outside and instead of asking them to turn the TV down I just waited until everybody was asleep and then filmed then. Another issue was that the script called for there to be a clock on the wall to mark the passage of time between different scenes that take place on different days, but uh, I couldn't find a clock that worked or that really fit the vibe I was looking for, and so I ended up just cutting the clock from the script, which proved to be a more simplistic fix than you would think. And like I said, I was having technical issues with my go-to microphone here, so I ended up filming all of the Brad voiceovers as well, on my iPhone. The audio quality isn't perfect and the audio sounds perhaps a bit echoey given the room I was in, but it really isn't that noticeable. If I found eventually that that detracted from the story, I would have just waited till I got home and recorded new audio then on this mic probably, but uh, it really didn't detract from the film in any way to me, so I just kept it as it was. So I texted Anna, asked her to send me her voiceovers for the film. She recorded them on her iPhone in a closet, which is a relatively soundproof room, generally speaking. After a couple of different times saying all the lines to sort of test the waters of how we felt about different deliveries, we decided on some recordings that we like, and I began to edit. I edited a rough cut of the film that night, and after a long day of shooting, recording audio, and editing, I called it a night and decided to finish it up the next day. The next day, I used Final Cut to sort of smooth out the rougher parts of the film, to add the credits, to finalize some music, and all of those things that come along with editing. In terms of editing, there really isn't anything too fancy that I did in the movie, but there are a couple relatively fancy things, so I'll share them just in case you're interested in learning how I did them. I censored the street number on my grandparents' mailbox by just sort of grabbing color from a different area of the mailbox and moving it over in front of the number. Nothing too complicated there. And it looked surprisingly smooth. You really cannot tell that that's being censored. I'm also a big fan of having sort of sudden jarring sounds cut the music out in short films as you see twice in this movie. And then there's clips like this, which are a little more complicated, which use keyframes to change the opacity of these clips over time to show us his words and him at the same time to sort of make us feel more like we're in his shoes and more involved in what he's seeing and what he's doing. Later in the film though, when he's more fed up with Linda and very ready to end things, I made an active choice not to use that effect. This way, unlike before, where we could see them both at the same time and they almost sort of became one, now there's much more of a disconnect between him and his words, showing us that he's really not as invested anymore in the situation. If you really want to learn more about film editing, then great, go learn more about film editing. I learned everything that I currently know from YouTube tutorials. I'll link some of my favorite ones in the description for you to go check out, and uh, yeah, go learn some things. I don't really have any tips for you in that area other than this. Editing at its core is an intellectual and emotional process. To properly edit, you have to have a full understanding of what you want the viewer to think and feel, and knowing how to make them think those things and feel those things is more a matter of practice, and it's certainly not something I've mastered, and it's really not something that can be perfected even by the best of editors. You can only get better and better and better. You don't need anything as fancy as Adobe Premiere or Final Cut. I know I have Final Cut, so I sound like a hypocrite saying that, but I could have edited this movie on iMovie as well, and you can edit movies on iMovie. I did it plenty of times with plenty of short films before I started making this. That, guys and gals and miscellaneous pals, is how I made a short film alone in the cold and the rain 
with zero budget. If you haven't seen my short film K yet, it's shorter than this video, so you might as well check it out. If you haven't already, make sure you press that ego boost button below, and if you haven't pledged your allegiance to Pictures Up by hitting the subscribe button yet, please, please do so. It's pertinent that you do. I will be uploading a short film every month until December this year, and I'm certainly not going to stop making things after that. I'll see you in the next video, and until then, I'm Sam Morgan, and this is Pictures Up.